Sometimes we tend to jump and be like, but why didn't it happen faster? Or why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you try that? But if we allow them to explain why they thought it was a success, I think that's huge. We want our team to be open with us. We need to hear their feedback. Their feedback is so important to our operations and to keep that culture positive. Recording in progress. Hello, friends. This is Stephen Harrington, the cut of the Diva of Insurance, along with my counterpart at APP. Therese Potter. Potter, or as I like to call her, Chop Chop. Ninja. Ninja. Ninja Potter. <laughs> the Ninja Potter. If I ever need security, what would you tell me at the the agency? I'm going to hire Therese to come with me. Sales okay. training, retention training, whatever. And, it's and martial arts, de- self-defense training. Yes. All of those things, Therese is my go-to. So today, guys, we're going to talk about a really exciting topic. It is managing sales producers or managing your sales team. I know sometimes it's like herding a bunch of cats or trying to wrangle the wild mongoose. We can use lots of different analogies when we're dealing with sales people because it's a unique variety of people and they have very skill set. And they do things their own way whenever we let them. So we're going to think of it as teaching a bunch of little kindergartners or first graders. Yes. They are really good at certain things and they can probably close. But can we get application sign? Can we hold them accountable? Can we get metric? And can we have them follow process? So we're going to give you some tips and tricks today on ways that we help agencies deal with. Let me clarify that, though. Kindergarten or first graders, and when it comes to the different types of learning styles and the different personalities, not like little children. I just don't want anybody to get that wrong. But today we're talking about five strategies to get your team on board. Teresa, don't let the hate mail. When this comes back. (laughs) Yeah, don't email me. So she's going to click You can reach her at T H E R E S E at (laughs) ExtremeLeaperformancePartners.com. Great. Cherise, what's one of the tips you have or one of the things you want to talk about today for how to manage a sales team effectively? Clear goals and expectations. Ooh, I like it. Tell me more. It looks like Bobby's coming in. Do you want to let Bobby in? We have a surprise guest star. Yeah, I think in several agencies that I've been in, the administration or the owners never really had goals or expect. Well, they had expectations like sales expectations, but you know, the goals were kind of wishy-washy. They weren't like written down. It's difficult because you have to, you have to have them written down so people can see them. You know, just like new year's resolutions. So they should be smart, right? The capital S M A R T. And when I was doing my blog, word got a little mad at me. It's like, I'm sorry, this is used a lot. But it's because it's true, right? They should be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. There has to be things that we can hold them accountable to, but it has to be clear, it has to be attainable, and we have to set a time limit on it or it may never happen. Right, right, for sure. Sorry to cut you off. I just got so excited over SMART because I remembered that one. I was like, I know this one. I know the answer. I think we also need to identify the sales channels and target markets so that they're not just out chasing anything and everything. New oh, for sales, sure. Sales people get so excited at whatever's shiny out there. Can we agree to agree on that one? Cool. Right? They're like, oh, oh, what about, but what about this? But what about, but what about? And I tend to do the same thing in sales, right? So I'm like, sure up. what if we came up with a program for, and Kelly's always like, okay, let's stop and let's focus on what we're good at. Not that we can't focus on that in the future, but let's go back to our target market. And we have Bobby now joining us. Hey, Bobby. Hey. So Bobby is one of our other friends here at APP, and she's going to help us decide some tips and tricks for managing a sales team from producer management. Well, and I had to mute myself real quick because I was afraid my dog was going to start barking. <laughs> So we talked about already setting clear goals and expectations, following the SMART method, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound, and really determining where we want our sales to be coming from or what our target markets are. Bobby, I know you just joined us, but what tips do you have? Do you have something you want to talk about today? Providing regular coaching and training. Oh, that's a good one. I will take Teresa's. I think that that is so important. I was actually just 
on a call with an agency where we were talking about training remotely too. So I think even in those remote environments, we really have to be intentional with our coaching and training. We have to have it on the calendar. We have to have a plan. We have to be intentional with our training and asking for feedback and keeping those feedback loops going. And it's important that we do it on a regular basis because otherwise we fall into those bad habits. I am amazed at how many agencies don't train their staff and just they're just like, here, here you go. And there's no processes, no procedures. They just kind of, and if they have more than one office, they kind of let each office run its own thing. They don't have coaching or training. They just assume that everybody kind of can figure it out. And it amazes me. One of my favorites is when they, they're like, but I told them all to watch the video. Uh-huh. But I told them all to read that article. And I, but can we tell them why or why it was important? And did we talk about it? So they understood it. So I think that brings us to number three, building a culture at the agency or a positive team culture. Mm-hmm. I know that when I was working at the last agency I was at, we had like six locations. 20 some people, they were bought through acquisition. So they were all running as their own little island. And when I came in, I had to be like, hey, guy, like your way might be the best way, but we're going to try it one way for a while. Mm-hmm. And we had to start establishing those sales processes and what the expectation was to help build the culture. But we couldn't have done that without those regularly scheduled meetings. So I think that each one of these things kind of builds and is inclusive to each other to where we're getting that little infinity swirl. Uh, There's all these things that we have to synergize to successfully manage a sales team. But regularly scheduled meetings, I think, is huge. But they have to be consistent, and we have to define what the point of them is. Are we going to do sales training? Are we doing role play? Are we talking about numbers? I think we have to be consistent in the message. And I think that it doesn't matter if you're virtual or if you're live in person. Because I know there's two camps right now. There's the pers- there's the agencies that are kind of split and some are hybrid, some are now, and some are home, some are in the office. We have the agency that's fully remote. And then we have the ones that are like, nope, we have to have every a button, every seat, and we got to have lots of staff in each location. And I've been there. We had the six locations. Each had to have people in them to keep them open. Or I got to drive to that location to keep it open for a day, right? And with COVID, we kind of learned that we didn't have to have as big of a footprint to solve the same impact. And we were actually able to close a couple locations, get things streamlined, and have more staff to help service the customers in a different way. But again, it all goes back to training and consistency. Well, and I think at an agency that I worked at, we ended up like later on at the end when I was there for a while and managing for a while we started doing like bowling activities and going to fire departments and police stations and handing out goodies for them. And I think it built a lot of teamwork. We did bowling as well. And it built some teamwork that you really wouldn't find in other places. It really made it fun because then you weren't just talking about insurance all the time. You were talking about the people you were helping and the community service. We actually went to a children's hospital and made cards with the children. I mean, it was a really cool experience. Of course, then you have you have to be careful because we did have a staff member that was taking advantage of it and leaving early, and he ended up shutting the program down because of it. So, you know, there has to be guidelines when you do that kind of stuff, but it really, it encourages the teamwork. It encourages fun and, and team building. So that's always a good direction to go as well. I think celebrating successes is huge. And I think that's kind of what you were talking about, but I think even like wacky things like, who got the most increases on towing this week? Or, you know, who added an umbrella? I mean, it can be these weird things where we have random contests or just celebrate the unknown. Dirk, for everybody's one-on-one, when I would meet with my team and my sales staff, we would always say, like, what's two good things that happened this last week and what's one thing you need to work on, right? So I let them bring it up. And if it didn't align with what I thought, I'd be like, cool, tell me why you think that way. Because it helped me learn more about their thought process. And I could then build in what I needed to to work with them. So we still celebrated even a small win was still huge. Like, oh my goodness, I've been working on an umbrella for three months. I'm like, we make no money on umbrellas, but it's great for retention. Tell me why it took three months to close this umbrella, right? And sometimes it's like the client just didn't understand, but I thought they really needed it. Or they just got a pool or their wrist changed them. Or I had to 
get their limits increased and get them comfortable with that. And it was just a whole process I went through. Sometimes we tend to jump and be like, but why didn't it happen faster? Or why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you try that? But if we allow them to explain why they thought it was a success, I think that's huge because a lot of times they were like, oh, well, I just was trying to be nice. And I followed up a couple of times and I let it sit. And I was like, oh, okay. So we don't have a clear process for that. So that's great. At least you thought of something. That is definitely really important. You know, asking them the right question and the open-ended question to hear hear their side of it and not just jumping on them and accusing them of stuff. I've been in agencies that that have missed that and they just, you know, jump after you. Why didn't you do it this way? Great point, Stephen. Yeah, I really, that's, that's a really good point for, for agencies to, <laughs> to ask open-ended questions like that and ask their side of it as well. Well, I think just asking the question sometimes, some agencies don't even bother to ask and it becomes an environment that's very stale and, and unapproachable. We want our team to be open with us. We need to hear their feedback. Their feedback is so important to our operations and to keep that culture positive and it allows us to grow and make changes that can make our team's lives easier. And that is super important in this environment that we're in where everybody is experiencing high stress and some burnout. If yeah. I think another thing we can do too is use technology to help either capture the information or streamline some of the process. Mm-hmm. So I know a lot of agencies have their agency management system, which I'm all for. Make sure it's in the system or it didn't happen. Let's stop for one second so I can say it again. If it's not in your management system, not your quoting system, not your rating system, not your CRM, not your email, not your whatever. If it's not in your management system, it never happened. The single source of truth. (laughs) Single source of truth that cannot be edited or manipulated. That's right. Like there's some amazing third-party vendors out there that work alongside a lot of our agency management systems that streamline or help build out processes. They do drip campaigns for email or drop texts or voice drops. I mean, technology has gotten so amazing, you guys, mm-hmm. that we even have like chat bots that can interact with clients now, right? That they're like, cool, like here's your parameter, go for it. And a lot of the, some of the startup agencies or the smaller agents I'm working with are really focusing on what technology can they use to get to that next level because they understand they can't afford another 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, $100,000 employee, right? It runs the whole gamut with commission, call, area you live in, whatever. So they're realizing like to get to the next level, I either need virtual assistant and I need to have simple processes they can follow to follow up on applications, missing underwriting information, make sure a file's complete. Or how can we build that sales pipeline and track all those things and make sure it's a consistent process. Because I think a lot of times when we work with producers, they lose a lot of their sales because they try once or twice, then they're on to the next hottest thing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, give me the sales stuff, right? Like you've already called them three times. Let me call the next three because I know I'm called seven and I'm going to win. You just did half the battle and gave up. I think a lot of these systems that a lot of the technology can help us, but we can't use it as the source for storing the client information or the interactions with the client. It also has to go back to the AMS or agency management system. And that kind of ties us into, you know, number five, though, too. Remember that you have to still be human and you have to let your clients know that you're human and that you're there. So number five is focus on the customer experience. I was going to say, I might be slightly obsessed with this one. I took a little extra time because I think some of this is missing a lot now. Yes. I think a lot of agencies get to the point where they're like, cool, like made the sale. Or it was a fast sale or it was an internet lead and I closed it, but then it burns off or falls off after six months or a year. Okay. <laughs> well, and the client just leave. Like there's no relationship. And and I like to to think about other customer service companies out there, like plumbers and electricians and your cable TV and your internet sources and your cell phone carriers. You if you notice some of some of them, not all of them, even doctor's offices. You'll leave the office and you'll get a text message. Please review me. How did I do? And you click on it. It takes you right to Google and it has your reviews. Those kind of things, the little touch points, you know, the happy birthday cards or the happy birthday emails. There's little touch points that you can use to change that customer experience. And it used to be the customer's always right. 
And then it's now it's like, eh, the customer is not always right. Well, in the insurance industry, they don't have the license like we do. So they may not be right, but we still have to treat them like customers and like they're valued. So we have to listen to them and and we have to try to wow them. So, I mean, just the silly thing, like Kelly likes the, the, the greeting. Hello, this is Therese from Agency Performance Partners. How can I make this the best call of your day? And I know right. people like laugh at that and they're like, I am not going to do that. But you'll be surprised at how many people laugh on the other end and you'll put them in a funny kind of laughing mood because they're just like, I cannot believe she just answered the phone that way. Mm-hmm. So what else do y'all have? I think that we also need to like, I'm going to skip around a little bit because I think follow-up is huge. Like after the sales where the relationship really tends to fall apart. Like we made all these promises. We're like, but I love you so much. And I want your business. And we've been over backward. And we've listened to you and we built this relationship and we've solved all your problems and we've gotten your money. And then they get no contact until their policy rating goes up. Four, five, six years go by and their rates change and you know things happen and they don't need a lot of service. And they're like, well, that agent was really nice, I guess. So finally, their friend's like, so I just called Bob down the street and Bob was able to save me $12. And they just leave and we never hear from them. And I think if we've got agents that are, because I know there's some agencies that have sales and service. And then there's other agencies that have sales and service together. I think if you're a sales agent, that you should introduce that person to your team. And we had a thing where we had to, if we sold something, we had to stay on that account for 30 days. Mm -hmm. So if there was any changes, anything came up, anything underwriting sent, we had to deal with it. But after those 30 days, it went over to the service agent. And if that's the case, I think it'd be great for us to introduce our service people to the customer that we sell to and just say, hey, these are the service people that will be servicing you now that I have sold the quote. Let me tell you their names and introduce you to them somehow, whether it be the website, you could send them a link to the website and say, here's our service team. And if and if you're both service and sales, you could always not be the one that's going to deal with them either. So you want to introduce them to whoever they'll be dealing with in the agency. It's, I mean, and it's a cute, a cool little extra by introducing them to the people that they may need to talk to in the future. Well, we had a lot of producers too that were like, but I sold it, I have to service that. I'm like, dude, your values in sale, not if you're horrible at service, right? Like you're going to try to take everything to the umpteenth degree and micromanage everything and not focus on new business where we have a whole trained staff that can take care of this quickly and you're going to struggle through it. Not that you're not good at it, but it's not what you normally do. So like we had a 90 day window because I wanted them to deal with any underwriting follow-up, mad customer at day 60 that couldn't get their other policy canceled. So I had the producer service it for the first 90 days. So they still got to feel helpful, quote unquote, but it was still a very clear process, right? Underwriting had to be fulfilled, all these things. And then they would do a warm transfer. They would call and get the account manager on the phone and they would call the client and they'd be like, hey, just wanted to introduce you to one of the people on our service team. Cool. And they'd be like, hey, Mr. Jones, we got any questions? Nope. Okay, great. I'm going to send you over a contact info. Moving forward, if you need anything, you call us. We're here to service you. They're normally out in the field or they're normally working with new customers. Our job is to keep you happy. We're going to be doing the annual review. We're going to be doing this. We're going to be doing this. And anytime you need a change, you contact us and we help you with that. Very and cool. I think it was huge. Would it be to create a little video for your customer with all of them, right? Right. But I mean, basically the, the service team was giving them our service product. Mm-hmm. The sales team's job was to get it and close. Yeah. The service team was to tell them our promise and really build that relationship because moving forward, they were going to be servicing it, hopefully for the next 10 to 20 years. So guys, I think we've had a lot of great tips. We're going to do a quick recap for you. The first one is set clear goals and expectations. Secondly, we have provide regular coaching and training. Then we have a foster a positive team culture. Use technology, capture the data, and streamline processes. And then what we just talked about, focusing on the customer experience. So if you need more information or want to work with us, we're happy to work with you and your sales team. We're happy to do training. We can do lots of different things, live, virtual consulting hours, online school, lots of options available to work with Bobby, myself, or even Teresa in the right situation. 
So let us know what you need and what you want. We are here for you and we hope you have happy sale. Happy sales. Happy selling. Sell a lot. Thanks, guys. Good though, too. Wow, customer service. Ooh, wow, service. Make the service happen.